Sparta Chris, and I'm here for the Generational Gaming and Entertainment Network. And welcome to the theater room. Uh, this is episode six. Uh, on this show, we generally focus on WandaVision because that's kind of like the big thing right now. But, uh, you know, I also try to watch a few other things too. I watched a surprise movie uh, the, over the weekend. And uh, I also watched my next James Bond movie. So I'm going to kind of go through all that. My wife made one of the best sweets she's ever made th this week. So I'll, kinda, I'll go over that as well. Um, but first, we can talk about WandaVision. Um, so, and this might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion, but I was a little bored watching the episode this week. Um, I felt like after last week, we needed, since this is the second to last episode, we kind of needed something that was not necessarily action-packed, but kind of carried more stakes. And I feel like it was pretty obvious. We've been talking about Agatha, or Agnes being Agatha since the first episode before the show even started and you know we finally got the reveal last week so i kind of hoped and i kind of thought that things would almost like kind of spiral out of control this week and we would be left on the finale trying to end it but also deal with the consequences the show is not a long show there's only you know half hour to 40 minute episodes so there's not a lot of time to do the conflict and the resolution in the same week so and in the same episode so i was i'm a little i was a little disappointed um i feel like we didn't get many answers it was cool to see some of the commercials come into play um this this week and it was cool to see you know some of uh, uh, wanda's origin kind of shown to us I don't know how much uh, Feige or D D Marvel planned on retconning the character into being a mutant or having powers from the beginning. They were pretty adamant that uh, the bomb just didn't go off. Um, it, you know, it makes sense. It doesn't seem like it's out of place, um, what they showed us. Her kind of stopping the bomb and then not realizing she did it. But, I don't know. It just, it just wasn't enough. I was hoping for more. And uh, I really feel like they kind of missed a boat in getting us more excited for the finale um but you know it's we, we still have time i guess um you know i, I want to say i saw a leak that the wandavision finale is going to be about an hour long so you know maybe they also whoever is creating the show or they who makes the decisions agrees that a half hour is not long enough to have a major battle which you know they got to have at least one major battle uh in a marvel show especially the first marvel show and um also uh leave us with a uh a good resolution that will keep the door open for her future movies and future appearances, but won't leave us feeling like this was kind of a waste of eight episodes. Um, a couple of standout moments, obviously, uh, White Vision at the end. Um, I did mention spoilers. It's in the name of the episode, but uh, that's a callback to the comic books. That's kind of how Vision looks uh, when he's in his more of a synthetic life form. He doesn't care about humans. Um, he's 100% robot in that form. Um, it, he looked cool uh, when we saw that little glimpse of him at the end of the last episode. Um, I feel like that's where the big fight or big battle is going to happen in the next episode. Maybe him versus Vision. Um, and then somehow, I feel like, I, I don't think they're done with Vision. I think he's going to be back. So either next episode, the, I guess you want to say the spirit chaos Vision that Wanda created will merge with the vision that sword rebuilt um and i'm wondering if so speaking of chaos energy you know i don't know that it ties into the comic books as much as a lot of people online are saying um i understand chaos magic is a thing and you know i feel like dr strange the first one established that you're able to pull energy from different dimensions in order to uh create your magic or your constructs or whatever it is in our dimension um, we know that the Ancient One was pulling energy from the Dark Dimension, and that gave her the mark on her forehead. We know that Cassilius and his people, Scott Atkins, were using energy from the Dark Dimension also, and that gave them the purple like burn marks around the eyes. Uh, Wanda has none of that stuff, so she's using the chaos, chaos magic, or creating the chaos magic, or whatever they're going to explain in the, in the show. But I don't think it's going to so much tie into the way it does in the comic books i have a feeling it's going to be or my gut anyway my theory is that it is going to be 
she's going to be harnessing the energy from another dimension, yes. Um, with that energy, she's going to fuse her version of uh, Vision with the uh, synthetic Vision, and that will allow him to survive outside of the Hex. But I think that's also going to be essentially taking a piece of another dimension and now establishing a physical uh, being that inhabits that energy on our on our reality or our dimension, which is going to lead almost like cause a rift in dimensions because that's not how you know the world works essentially. And I think that's where Doctor Strange is gonna have to come in and kind of figure out. Well, we gotta send that little magic, that little part of him back. She's not gonna want to do that. And then it'll be well, let's search the multiverse for some sort of answer on how we can fix this. Um, and I think that will lead into his movie. Uh, but you know, that's just speculation. Um, I, all I'm really looking forward to and all I really want is a giant fight between the visions. I want vision versus vision and maybe Wanda in the background going at it with Agatha. Um, I think we've, it's pretty much been made clear now that Agatha might be a more experienced witch, but Wanda is a more powerful witch. Um, so we'll see how that happens. I am curious to know what's going to happen with Wanda's kids. Um, you know, it could very well be that they disappear or they're gone for good at this point. Maybe she feels them, but they don't exist in our existence outside of the hex. And in order for her to get her kids back, she has to go into other dimensions, which again could tie into Doctor Strange too. Um, otherwise, you know, not a ton happened. Um, I do like that they've now created the Scarlet Witch name as more of a legend. Not necessarily just a mantle that you can pass on like Black Panther or Captain America. Um, so it's, it almost feels more weighty in the movies. In the comic books, it's really just, you know, if you're a witch and there happens to be no Scarlet Witch, you can kind of just take that name. Um, I'm also curious to know what's going to happen with Evan Peters' Quicksilver. Um, so it seems like Agatha created him. That's what it sounded like in the last episode. But there's got to be more of a reason why she had she created the Pietro that looks like uh, Peter from the X-Men world. So, you know, it can't be coincidence that that was the case. Um, I don't think that we're going to get answers. Uh, honestly, at this point, I feel like we might get some, some good, like, action-packed episode on Friday. But I don't think we're going to get any good answers because Marvel is saving all those answers for a future movie. There were rumors that Scarlet Witch is going to get her own movie at some point. You know, I would hate for them to wait that long to give us answers, but at, th at this point, I wouldn't expect them to really explain a lot. Um, I think we're just going to get, like I said, s some good action scenes, you know, some good moments, uh, maybe more more of a resolution or more of a finality to Monica's powers and what her plan is going forward. But I don't think we're going to, we're even close to getting answers for Wanda and Vision and how that, how that works. Um, I did read somewhere that maybe Agatha wanted to harness some of, my, of Wanda's powers to bring back someone that she lost and that's why she kind of stuck around in the hex and manipulated wanda uh, i also read that it's possible that her little rabbit maybe holds the spirit of somebody maybe she was able to trap the spirit of somebody in there but she never had the the experience or the you know the the knowledge to actually bring them back into a, a regular human form um so that would be a good a good kind of tie-in for Ag agatha to kind of keep her around um, but yeah, I mean, the episode wasn't anything great. I mean, not a ton happened. We didn't get a lot of answers. Um, you know, it's interesting that we were told that Hydra and Strucker experimented on Wanda and her brother. And it just seems like those experiments were, let's just put them in a room with the, uh, the scepter and see what happens. I find it strange that the scepter gave or activated her telekinesis or telepathy and it gave her brother super speed. So I think there might be more to it than that. Um, you know, maybe there's some things we're missing or things we're not seeing. Um, you know, again, I don't know if we're going to find out this this week, though. So, uh, you know, it's a little disappointing. Uh, to me, I feel like the first six episodes of the show were good. And they were building and building and building. And I feel like these last two episodes kind of, you know, hit the brakes a little too much and brought the show to a little bit of a halt. So, uh, you know... I hate to sound like I'm, I'm trashing the show, but, you know, Marvel's got uh, big shoes to fill, essentially, their own shoes. But, you know, they've established themselves as a powerhouse and pretty consistent. So, you know, you, once you start expecting the best, uh, you won't settle for anything less. But, yeah, so those are my, that's my opinion. I mean, let me know what you guys think. But, uh, you know, if you have any theories uh, that you think are tangible, please let me know. Uh, I'm going to share the recap on YouTube if you're not watching on Twitch. You can uh, comment on the YouTube video and we can chat. 
Um, all my social medias will show up at the end of the video. Um, you can kind of get me there too, and we can kind of get ready. Either way, uh, you know, I think we need to tune in for the finale. It's going to be an awesome episode. Uh, you know, the, the production value is high. The quality of the shows are high. We just need, I just want some answers, and I don't feel like we're going to get them because they're Marvel, like always, is playing the long game. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in Marvel news, though, I will mention that I saw uh, this week or today, actually. Um, it's been confirmed now that Matt Damon is coming back to for the next Thor movie to play his version of Loki in in the play that Loki was putting on in Thor Ragnarok, and it looks like Melissa McCarthy is going to be in it as the Hela for that play. Also, you know, I feel like that was should have been just kind of a one done joke. I don't really think I need to bring it back, but I have all the the faith in the world that Takai Waititi knows what he's doing, so. I'll just kind of go by his uh, uh, opinion, and I'm still going to see the movie anyway. Um, so a couple of other things uh, about this week, really. I watched the next movie in the Bond series, which was Thunderball. Last week, I mistakenly trashed the beginning of Goldfinger, confusing it with the beginning of Thunderball, because Thunderball is just that bad. It was kind of hard to get through. It was very slow. And while Thunderball really leaned into the tropes that the Bond movies uh, tend to have, it was very, it was almost too campy too quick. So the opening jetpack scene was garbage. Uh, I do agree that Melissa McCarthy, uh, Emily Gilmore, thank you for commenting. I do agree that, you know, a lot of people are over her. I was talking to one of the guys in the network named Scythe. Scythex, and uh, he kind of agreed. She works a lot better when she's a secondary character with no filter and R rating, and she can just kind of riff with somebody. She'd probably be good in the Deadpool world, but you know, she, she's ever since she tried to go mainstream and, and cut back on the cursing and the vulgarity, she really hasn't hit the same strides. Uh, Bridesmaids, The Heat, and uh, this is 40 probably are her best moments on screen, so. Um, but anyway, back to Thunderball. I think uh, uh, you know the opening scene with the jetpack was shot in a way where it felt like it was almost a made-for-TV movie, and that's for back then. Um, the fact that Bond was able to stop the two henchmen from getting to him in his car by shooting two fairly weak streams of water out of the back of the car, and they couldn't just you know take a step or two to the side; they just kept running into the water. It was just it was bad, you know. He was floating in the air, and they're sh and they're shooting at him from the hip again, which is the thing I hate the most. I, I just don't I don't understand, you know, how long it's gonna take for somebody in on production to say, you know, you got to aim down the sights, um, you know. So uh, you know, all that being said, I got through it. It was hard to get through. Um, I think after someone like Goldfinger and Odd Job, they they couldn't match the the same kind of intensity or charisma of the villains, and it was just it was just wasn't that great? So, needless to say, I'm glad I'm over, I'm through the first uh, Connery movies, uh, and I'll be moving on to the next movie for next week. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of flying through them pretty quick. It, they're all short movies. You know, I haven't. I know they get longer when Daniel Craig is in them, but so far none of them have been that long. So, um, yeah. So I would say so far out of all the ones I watched, including Doctor No, Thunderball is the worst one. Um, and still, I don't under, I don't see why Sean Connery won so many. So much praise as Bond. He just, he feel it feels to me like he's kind of going through the motions. I don't feel like he's really giving it his all. I mean, you know, I'll see when I compare to other Bonds, but so far that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Uh, otherwise, you know, another surprise movie. Uh, the other day I was just kind of, you know, sitting by myself downstairs. My wife was with my daughter. And uh, I just kind of quickly went on Netflix into the action category to see what was available. And I saw a trailer for a movie called Bloodfather. And so it stars the what made me stop and see that watch the trailer was Erin Moriarty, who's from The Boys. She plays Starlight, was in the was in the trailer. So then I'm watching it and I see Mel Gibson, who you know we all know he's kind of a piece of shit, but uh, the, the he's the trailer still look good and he can still play an intense kind of uh, asshole. Um, William H Macy's in it. A few you know um, uh, Gabriel Luna, I think is his name from uh, Rogue One. He's in it also. And once I saw all those names, I said, you know what, let me just give it a shot. Again, it was a short movie, an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes tops. Um, but it was a good action flick. It was intense. It was uh, uh, entertaining. You know, it kind of felt like it was uh, uh, made strictly for Netflix. I didn't really look it up afterwards, but 
if you're looking for some mindless action that doesn't doesn't have a very deep story uh, and doesn't have a lot of twists and turns along the way, that's that's a good one. Bloodfather on Netflix. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be there for. Um, if you can't stand Mel Gibson, then it's easy to skip it. But if you know you can stomach him for a little bit, then give it a shot. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, and then last uh, short episode this week because uh, not too much happened. Last on the list is my wife went out of her way to make a peanut butter pie with an Oreo crust. I tried to get the picture to show up. It just wouldn't show up, so I'm going to have to put it on the recap. But, damn. It wasn't too peanut buttery. It was almost like a peanut butter cheesecake, kind of, but it's not cheesecake. I don't know how else to describe it. It was delicious. Uh, she is outdoing herself week after week. And I'm telling, I keep telling her to slow down so she doesn't uh, burn herself out because um, I want these to keep coming. Um, but she makes it, and I get to enjoy eating it, so I can't complain too much. Um, otherwise, you know, that's, that's really it for this week. Uh, uh, not a lot of announcements over the weekend. I thought FanFest was going to bring a lot of new trailers and stuff. Um, there's a few, you know, new games coming out. Um, but nothing really huge. I did read that in the Mortal Kombat reboot. Apparently Cabal is in it and he's in the trailer. Uh, you know, while I like the character that already kind of scares me, there's too many characters in the movie. Uh, I was saying that before with Melina. Now Cabal, I, I, that just doesn't make sense. Um... You know, so I don't know. I, I'm I go back and forth. I'm still excited for the movie. The trailer just won me over, but uh, it's just one. It's just one character too many. I'm hearing rumors that Shao Kahn's gonna make appearance, an appearance. That's another just one one uh, character too many. They're trying to put too much in one movie, and they need to take their time. If anything, if anyone's learned anything from Marvel, it's take your freaking time, slow down, one character at a time. You don't need to go nuts. Um, otherwise that's it for today it's a, a nice short episode a nice quick episode uh, this is what you get when nothing really happens on WandaVision um, I'll be back on Sunday to talk about any of the new updates throughout the week uh, I might even talk about WandaVision since the finale um, coming, to, to, coming to America 2 is coming out soon I will absolutely talk about that um, after WandaVision we go right into Falcon and the Winter Soldier I know uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen went from filming WandaVision straight into filming Doctor Strange 2. I do think we're going to get a trailer of some sort uh, at the end of next episode. We're going to get something for a future show. Maybe Loki, maybe Black Widow, although we've seen plenty of trailers for that. Um, you know, this right now, as of right now, Black Widow is still coming out in theaters. So I don't know if anyone feels comfortable going to see it. I, right now, I feel like I'm, I don't, I'm okay with seeing it, but I don't want to see it by myself. So I might have to... Uh, just wait for it to come out on uh, demand somewhere or on Disney Plus. Um, yeah, but that's it. Make sure you check out any of the other guys in the Generational Gaming and Entertainment Network. Scythe X, One Shot, and The Captain streaming randomly. I think Scythe X is on right now on his Twitch streaming Miles Morales for PS5, um, which is a fantastic game. I platinumed it. It's worth it. If you're interested in the game but don't feel like buying it or don't have time to play it, go watch it. Um, Resident Evil 8 is coming out soon, so uh, I'm actually itching to do some Resident Evil games. Maybe I'll replay Resident Evil 7 to prepare. Um, you know, I'll be sharing, I'll be streaming that on, on our channel as well. Uh, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. Give me some, hit me up in the chat. Let me know what you want to talk about. Let me know any ideas for future episodes. And uh, any, otherwise, I will see you guys on Sunday. Happy gaming. Enjoy the movies. Enjoy the cinema. Enjoy the TV. Uh, I will see you next week.